Hello. Hello, Jack here. Um, I just want to 100% clear up right now that I'm not a Tory. So hold me close and say three words like you used to do. Good video, guys. Then make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Give it a big thumbs up. Do I care that my views on YouTube have dropped? Did I stop uploading on YouTube because I was getting less views? I won't lie to you, it was a knock to my ego. YouTube star Jack Harris will appear in court this week after he protested outside an international petroleum conference in London, gluing his hands to the door of a hotel. He and eight others from a climate change group called Extinction Rebellion were arrested for aggravated trespass and criminal damage. Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and I'm still an alpha male. Today I'm going to be reminiscing a bit about the 2012 to 2015 YouTube scene, what some people who grew up watching YouTube might call the golden age of vloggers, and the dawn of the age of the British nice guy on YouTube, one that has slowly died out over time. The main people I'll be talking about in this video are what some viewers may remember as the Brit crew, i.e. Marcus Butler, Alfie Days, Joe Sugg, Jim Chapman, and also to an extent Jack Scapp, the token British British white boys that won the hearts of their fans back in the day by collaborating with each other with challenge videos, tags and vlogs. So today let's have a look at how this seemingly unstoppable breed of guy fell from grace and got replaced by a newer, louder, younger breed of vlogging star, but also interestingly how some of them managed to grow and adapt to the platform or use it in a different way. At the height of their fame, these guys were among the most idolised of this new digital age celebrity. They were branded as relatable vloggers who tapped into the sort of observation or comedy that you might see stand-up comedians doing, but on a much more personal and silly level. They started a new form of entertainment that seemed far less out of reach than the traditional media, and as this British crew networked and started making videos together, they formed this sort of YouTube supergroup that really dominated the vlogging platform at their peak. But as quickly as they rose up on the platform, they seem to have fallen off it. And this seems to be the result of many of them failing to adapt to the demands of new YouTube audiences. It's become apparent in recent years that since the pool of YouTube creators grows, viewers have a lot more to choose from than they did back then. There's content to cater to every sort of niche interest, and with hours upon hours being uploaded every day, there's simply so much high quality content out there for people to be watching that we've almost moved past the need for what these creators once were. And unfortunately for many of these vloggers, they failed to adapt and their audience simply moved on. Let's look at Jim Chapman for example. At his peak his videos were getting millions of views. His relationship with YouTuber Tanya Burr was something that viewers loved to watch blossoming on screen and he gained a lot of attention from his collaborations with the other vloggers of his time. His engagement and subsequent wedding with Tanya and his fun guy next door sort of personality really won the hearts of millions of people. However now with over 2 million subscribers his vlogs are barely breaking 100,000 views with some strong struggling to even break 50k. Even videos that usually get lots of attention such as this engagement announcement that he posted, if it's not already apparent his relationship with Tanya Burr has since ended, show that few people have stuck around with him for this long. And then there's Marcus Butler who underwent many rebranding attempts before he deleted all of his videos completely. And Alfie Days who's just, that I'm not a Tory. Well I did a whole video on that but I don't think it will be long before the long personal vlog format will be wiped out completely because Let's face it, the most successful vloggers in recent years are dynamic. They use quick cuts, they get to the point. Even YouTubers who are sitting in front of the camera use handheld movement effects to keep the viewer engaged. There's such a contrast between what viewers are gravitating towards at this moment in time compared to the Alfie Days extremely long lethargic vlogs for example. The channels that made these stars, such as Marcus Butler, Alfie Days and Jim Chapman, famous have been in steady decline since about 2017, and in my opinion 2017 was a significant year as it would mark a significant shift in the general public's views of these YouTubers due to the Hello World scandal. Hello World! Hello World! Hello World! If you don't know what Hello World is, you're missing out. <gasps> What the heck was that? What is Hello World? So, Hello World is going to be epic. Nothing like this has ever been done before, as far as we're aware. This is gonna be like its own world, obviously, Hello World. Oh my God, cat, please. At Hello World, there are kind of two parts. There's a daytime experience and a nighttime show. For the daytime experience, picture this. You've got a big street, like an indoor street, but it's kind of outdoory vibes. So you've got an indoor street called Main Street. Along Main Street, you may bump into a YouTuber or two. Whoa. What is Hello World not? 
So it's not about queuing up hours and hours to meet YouTubers and having nothing else to do and being bored out of your brain. Now I have talked about this a bit before in my Zoella video, but I would like to have a look more into how this scandal changed the public perception of vlogging stars and highlighted how YouTube had changed. Before Hello World, YouTube conventions and meetups had always been focused on creators being able to meet fans. Creators were not paid to attend these events, but rather went of their own volition. And the main convention in the UK, Summer in the City, grew from just a meetup in a park to a large scale high demand event. Hello World was then set up to compete with this after these original vlogging stars stopped going to conventions such as Summer in the City because they weren't getting paid. It's actually rumoured that the personalities were paid to be a part of this convention and actually had shares in the company itself, presenting a motivation for them to set it up perhaps. Now the convention was marketed as something like nothing we'd seen before as creators would just be walking around and talking with fans throughout the day and we quickly found after the first day that it was anything but this, with parents and fans demanding refunds for the hundreds of pounds that they'd spent on a ticket to this supposed exclusive event. It became apparent that the vloggers in question spent most of their time in their own VIP area, leaving fans disappointed after they were promised that they would meet their favourite YouTube stars. For me, this scandal marked a significant turning point in the careers of these British YouTubers, as the issues with the commercialised Hello World convention can be looked at from many angles, but it was a huge diversion from what YouTube was. The humble convention centred around fan interaction had been replaced by a cash grab, and it wouldn't be the first time in recent years that many of these YouTubers had done things seemingly more for the money than for the passion or fan service. But there are some YouTubers who chose not to rinse their platform for all that it was worth until it ran dry. Some quit whilst they were ahead. One of the earliest and most interesting channels to fall off the YouTube grid at their peak was Jack's Gap. Jack's Gap was a channel started in 2011 by Jack Harries, where he planned to document his gap year online. And as the channel grew, we were soon introduced to his twin brother, Finn. They immediately seemed to capture the hearts of the internet with their challenge videos, creative vlogs, and eventually travel vlogs. However, unlike their counterparts, instead of trying to stay relevant, relevant on YouTube, they slowly left the platform. Though they still upload occasionally, it's often online video content that relates to their other projects, as opposed to the more traditional content focused around their personal lives that they used to make. In 2015, Finn announced that he was moving to New York to study design and architecture, which was significant as many of their YouTube counterparts had decided against formal education in the pursuit of YouTube in their early 20s. Even Jack Carries himself dropped out of university for this reason, and from this point onwards the Jack Scap channel slowly moved in a different direction. They started posting high quality, high production value documentaries once every few months, often not so much featuring themselves, but the world around them and occasionally their audience. They moved away from the vlogging style that they pioneered on the platform and were among the first not only to branch out and pursue other things, but to use their platform for activism and causes that they believed in, rather than trying to adapt to the YouTube algorithm. They became climate change activists. Jack Harry's even got arrested last year at a climate protest against oil companies, and they are now known for their filmmaking and activism and have almost moved away from YouTube completely, yet they retain their millions of followers. He and eight others from a climate change group called Extinction Rebellion were arrested for aggravated trespass and criminal damage. Jack Harris, who's 25, became well known through the YouTube channel. He started with his twin brother called Jack's Gap, which has nearly 4 million subscribers. Extinction Rebellion was started at the end of 2018, with the aim, they say, of driving radical change through non-violent resistance. Uh, Jack has been explaining what motivated him to get involved with the movement. As my work as a documentary filmmaker, um, I've spent the last four years making short films for YouTube. Um, the, the first film I made that sort of set me onto the path that I'm on now was a short film uh, where I travelled to Greenland to go and see the effects of glacial retreat and that was with the WWF, the World Wildlife Foundation. They recently announced the launch of a new online platform called Earthrise that aims to reframe the climate crisis as a social justice issue in the knowledge that those who have done the least to cause climate change are impacted by the most. Earthrise strives to amplify the BIPOC voices who have consistently been marginalised from this conversation and they are seemingly continuing to focus their careers on fighting climate change, posting the old corresponding video on their original YouTube channel. But there is one YouTuber who is a part of this original white British vlogger epidemic who is actually still on the rise. The only one who truly managed to adapt and continue his success story in an upward trajectory, in my opinion, was Joe Sugg. 
Joe Sugg, the brother of Zoella or Zoe Sugg, has managed to branch out and create a career for himself in the entertainment industry, whilst also still uploading to YouTube and being faithful to the platform that made him, which in my opinion is a hard strike to balance and one that few have achieved. Joe Sugg rose to fame with the rest of the British YouTubers of his time, making challenge videos and collaborations, but then he started to get onto mainstream television. And unlike many YouTubers before him who tried to do the same, instead of his audience turning on him, they not only seemed to support him but he also gained new fan bases from his TV appearances. In 2018 he went on Strictly Come Dancing and came runner up and he's since appeared on well loved British TV shows such as Would I Lie to You and The Great British Bake Off. His now girlfriend Diane was also his partner on Strictly Come Dancing and they instantly became fan favourites for their chemistry on the show and they continued to make YouTube videos together. He even made his West End debut in the musical Waitress playing the character of Ogie in 2019 and overall I feel like he is one of the only of this original crew that managed to successfully branch out of YouTube as well as still embracing the platform that made him and he's managed to create a successful career for himself in the entertainment industry. But let's face it, British YouTube peaked at Marcus Butler's rap. I'm the best in the game, nobody can touch my fame if you wanna make it rain, bitch you better know my name. So that's a bit of an internet deep dive on these original British YouTubers. Do let me know if you like this kind of video and who I should look into next or if you absolutely hated it that's fine too. I have as always been your Uncle Herman, you can check out my merch you can like and subscribe to this channel if you feel like it or if not if you don't and i will see you very soon in my next video